Well, hello there. So let me just get right to the point. Let me tell you why I decided to do a tribute on June Foray. There have been a whole lot of them recently since she passed away at the age of almost 100. By now, most of you know she missed 100 by just a couple months. I've seen some of the tributes to Ms. Foray and some of them are good, but I don't think any of them really did her justice because they left out something very important. Any tribute should dedicate at least a quarter of its time to this, the Fractured Fairy Tales. The Fractured Fairy Tales showcased her talent like nothing else that she did. There were 91 of them made between 1959 to 1964 as a part of the Rocky and Bullwinkle show. Believe it or not, each one was only five minutes long. Now, June wasn't in every single one. She was in 88 of them. But when she did, when she was in them, she was a lone woman, the sole woman, doing every single voice. And in some cases, June did maybe four characters, and they didn't sound alike at all. <laughs> and besides that, I just love the Grimm's fairy tales, even more so that they're fractured, kind of funny. So I put together some of the best moments from the Fractured Fairy Tales, which really put June on the map in a great way. I hope you like them. Now I know like after a few minutes, you're gonna start to hear some of the same voices again and again, and you're gonna think, now wait a minute, I've heard that voice now maybe two, three times, what's the big deal? For me, this isn't just about the number of voices she did, it's also important moments in animation history. Some of what you're about to view is incredibly funny, had great writers, is very colorful, and is just very memorable to so many of us who grew up with her. So June, this is for you. Once again, I wish you could have made a little bit longer to reach your 100th birthday, but this is for you, June. Kindly old Geppetto had no sooner shuffled off to bed than a good fairy mysteriously appeared. Ooh, oh, 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 kindly old Geppetto, he's so lonely. I shall grant his wish and give this puppet life. Hey, hey, what happened? Who are you? I'm the good fairy and I've just brought you to life. You're kidding. No. But look at me, I'm still wood. I want to be a real boy. You shall be, but first you must do a brave deed. I knew there was a catch in it. Now you must tell kindly old Geppetto the good news. And the good fairy disappeared as mysteriously as she had come. Come in, dear. This is your new home. Here we come, my love. We? Mother has to come live with us. Well, don't just stand there, stupid. Get your apron on. You've got work to do. 98 cents. I'm rich. I'm well to do. Well, I was wondering when you were going to pay the rent. Now lift those bed sheets, tote that pail, get a little lazy, and you'll land in jail. Unable to stand it another minute, Delicia ran back to the little man in the club. And so they both lived happily ever after, which is more that can be said for the ogre. Clean up this cave. What's the matter with you? Get those roots and bones out of here. Please, please don't beat this old purple body. Don't hit me. Your time is up. You're right. Every second counts. Yeah, it does. You've got to get these dispatches to the front. You're the only one with a horse. Carry on. Trust me, Colonel. Did the wolf get here yet, Grandma? Oh, he's been and gone two times, child. I just sent him off with a package of... Goodies. Well, I guess he won't bother us anymore, and... Uh, you know, I've decided to quit riding Hoots Anonymous. I'm gonna eat both of you. Now, now, remember. I pledge, I pledge, I will not eat. One riding hood can spell defeat. Run! Every day in every way, I am not eating riding hoods. Run! And then Riding Hood and her grandmother dashed out of the house just one jump ahead of the wolf. What are you doing, dear? Nothing. What are you doing? Nothing. Guess what we're having for dinner. Nothing? Yes, under glass yet. This is my daughter, a beautiful princess. Aren't you, sweetie? Yeah, but I'm almost 32 and nothing's ever... Never ever... mind. The king flew into such a rage at this turn of events that he hurled his throne out of the window. And a chance to strike a transient witch who was passing through. All right, all right, who threw the 
throne. I did. What about it? This about it. <laughs> and the angry witch casts a spell on the king, changing him into a homely, scrawny little duck. See? No Snow White here. Just dwarfs. Oh, will you look at that poor woman? A B1 deficiency. Now, how could you ever hope to be the fairest with improper diet? Improper diet? No, not meats. No yogurt. No wheat jam. But I have nothing left to pay for anything. You need the Seven Dwarfs health food plan. Do you what? Just this mirror. That's all I have left. That's all? Okay, we'll take it. Here, and your health food plan starts with eating these poise, these apples. So the Wicked Queen wound up with nothing but her own poison apples. But suddenly... Pardon me, do you have a pay mirror I can use? Right over there. Is it a local? Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the fairest of them all? Snow White is the fairest one, but getting there is half the fun. Oh, goody, goody, goody. That's me. I'm Snow White. No, there really is a Snow White. Suddenly... Hiya, sweetie, I'm back. And it was that ever a ride. Well, you can have the whole thing back now, toots. Sleeping Beauty Land is a flop. Now, wait a minute. She's been asleep for 20 years, right? Right. Maybe people would pay money to talk to somebody who's been asleep for 20 years. You mean... Yes, we just wake her up. We'll make a fortune. Go ahead and do it. Who, me? You put her to sleep, didn't you? Well, frankly, no. I'm not really a wicked fairy. I'm just wicked. But then how... Easy. I... You kiss her. You're a prince, aren't you? Well, not exactly. I never joined the union. I really make my living beating pigskins. You mean... Yes. I'm a hog flogger. But just then a remarkable thing happened. Sleeping Beauty's eyes opened and she sat up. Don't worry, kids. I wasn't really asleep. Then why the big 20-year act? I just wanted to see if I could make it in showbiz. very wealthy customer entered her shop. Oh, boy. Uh, yes, madam, may I help you? I should like to buy a wolfskin riding hood. Wolfskin? Yes. Well, perhaps madam would like to try on this matte shrewskin hood. No, thank you. This lemming with lima lining? No. Here's the latest thing from Africa. Genuine number one boy. Now, see here, young lady. I want a wolfskin riding hood. Money is no object. I shall be here at three o'clock to pick it up. Meanwhile, not too far away, a mother wolf was calling to her son. Walter! Yes, Mama, honey? I want you to take this basket to Grandma's house right away. But she was here only yesterday and took a whole basket of stuff. I know, but she forgot her teeth. Now, you don't want Granny to have to sit over there and gum her goodies, do you? Good heavens, no! Give me the basket! Remember now, Walter, you must go through the Hollywoods. Don't you worry, Mama, honey. I'll be careful. Why, his highness has disappeared. Oh, thank goodness. I was afraid he was going to get sick. Now the aroma of the tobacco leaf pie proved to be most irresistible, and the queen insisted upon a taste. But, Your Grace, the king just took one bite and disappeared. You... Oh, that's silly. How could one bite of this delicious smelling pie make one... Well, anyway, now we can go in the castle and get the princess to be my queen. No, not quite yet. First, you must do away with a wicked witch that guards her. Problems, problems. Why so many problems? It's the breaks, boy. Beautiful princesses just don't come easy in these fairy tales. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, okay, what's the gimmick with a wicked witch? I'll give you a magic word that'll make her disappear. And that is? Thundervogel. Wouldn't you know it? Me with a lousy memory. So, armed with the magic word, the king ran into the castle and... Ha-ha! Now, you wicked witch. Hold it. I'm the beautiful princess. That's the wicked witch over there. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Ha-ha! <laughs> now, you wicked witch. So, a handsome king who dares to enter my castle, eh? Well, just for that, I'll turn you into a toad. <laughs> Fisherman. Why do you catch your fins in the net? No, I've come to repay your kindness. Oh, that's all right. I promise to grant you any wish you may ask of me. Well, I sure do wish this net was mended. I'll do more than that. Hey! And suddenly, the fisherman was holding a beautiful brand new net. It, it's true. Oh, wait, Lytel, honey bun. 
That night, the fisherman told his wife all that had happened. Why, I can hardly believe it. Say, Turtle Dove, why don't you ask me something? Oh, I don't know. Go on. Well, I could use a new apron. He tried being a lover. My darling, ask anything of me, and it's yours. Good. Can I have your father's autograph? And in a few moments, Prince Fletcher and his writer stood before a little hut in the woods. Winona Witch, magic spells, and peanut butter cookies. Oh, that's right, dearie. I put in a sideline. Well, Winona, we're here to do business. Good. How many boxes? Boxes. We need a magic spell. Oh. Once upon a time, in a large forest, there lived a woodchopper, his wife and their two children, Hansel and Gretel. It was a beautiful forest full of trees, flowers, butterflies, and streams. Matter of fact, there was just one thing missing. Food! I must have food! Food? Food isn't everything, dear. No, but it's something. But we have the trees, the flowers, the butterflies, the streams. What more could a body want? A square meal, that's what. And what good are logs? You can't eat them. Who says? Mmm, yummy. Anyone for roast leg of log? I think we better split and get some food, Hansel. Yeah, looks like Mom's a little kooky. Kooky? I wish I had a kooky. Come in. Seems I can hardly keep the little beggars in stock these days. Excuse me, are you Snow White? Right, how many do you want? How many what? Dwarfs, of course. Let's see. Twenty-seven to the North Pole, at least seven. Seven dwarfs is all I have left. I don't want any dwarfs. Well, we discontinued our giant line, you know. Too much overhead. No. I just dropped you a little gift from the Witch Pack Company. Apples. My, they are tasty. Yes, eat one and you'll just die for more. <laughs> well, if you ship prepaid, I'll take... But mothers in law are human. Oh, yeah. You fat, pompous little worm! King or no king, you're a nincompoop! And let me tell you! Just then, a strange little man appeared before her. Little lady, I can make you famous overnight. Who are you? I am what is known as a PR man. PR man? Public relations, my dear. Public relations! It is my business to glamorize the unglamorous. In my hands, the pedestrian becomes splendorous, the prosaic resplendent. What do you do, baby? Oh, I spin straw. That's it. You spin straw. So? Don't interrupt. It's coming. What? The idea, the spark. I got it. I got it. You spin straw into gold. Yeah, but I can't That's spin straw. Doesn't matter. I'll do the thinking. Now I'll just contact the trades. But wait. Just I... leave it to me, please. For up ahead, a dark figure was bent over pulling weeds, and pinned on the back of that dark figure was a sign that said, Kick me and get a surprise. Alden couldn't resist. He booted. Ow! Mother of pearl, I kicked a witch. You know what I do to young men who boot me? I cast a spell on them. But my name is Alden Farquhar. From this day on, you'll be as ugly as all get out. And you will remain ugly until the day that a fair maiden kisses you. <laughs> well, you couldn't get much more ugly than what Alden became. He was beastly looking. Ten beautiful maidens? What could you possibly want from me? Can you tell us what happened to Alden Farquhar? That name rang a bell. And sure enough, there on page 462 of her income tax report was the story of how she had changed Alden into a beast, which was deductible. Then the beast that lives in the castle is really our beloved Alden. Yes, and all you have to do is kiss him. That'll break the spell, and I'll no longer be able to claim him as a dependent. Many years ago, there was a year that was a mighty bad year for witches. They were everywhere, big ones, little ones, ugly ones, and uglier ones. In fact, there were so many that there just weren't enough people to go round to cast spells upon. Let go! I want to put him to sleep for a hundred years! You let go! I'm going to change him into a chicken! But I saw him first! <laughs> you did not! Then one day, as a little witch was searching the forest for a victim... 
If I don't find somebody to cast a spell on pretty soon, I'll... Then suddenly, the witch saw a little frog sitting on a log near a pond. Well, well, what have we here? We have a frog. What have we there? I'm a witch. That figures. And I'm going to cast a spell on you. Oh, come now. I'm already a frog. What else could you do to me? But the witch was desperate, and with a wave of her hand, she changed the frog into a handsome young prince. <laughs> Oh, oh, boy, that felt good. Hey, what's the big idea? I don't want to be a handsome prince. I was happy as a frog. Well, uh, I admit it isn't the kind of a spell we usually cast, but times are hard. Ta-ta, dearie. <laughs> Naturally, when it came time to give out the award for the best witch of the year... I shall treasure this gold-plated skull the rest of my unnatural life. <laughs> Grizz, you're due to fly to London tonight to touch off the year at a plague. We'll cancel that until Monday. I have to lock a damsel named Rapunzel in a tower. I'm dancing! <laughs> I must have that prince. But Griselka was so ugly that she could look in a mirror and crack it. Mirror, mirror on the wall, and don't you dare crack on me. How can I win the prince's love? You must cast a spell on yourself. And now I must go before I crack up. Of course. The mirror is right. If I change myself into a beautiful princess, the prince will fall in love with me. Through the mouth and through the gums. Look out, stomach. Here it comes. The age-old incantation never failed. Where once there was a witch, stood an enchanting princess. The desperate princess returned to the hut where she had once lived as a witch, followed closely by the broom. Oh, if there was only someone to help me. There is, there is. Oh, mirror, mirror on the wall, reflecting all this gloom. How in the world does one get rid of an old but faithful broom? At that moment, the witch flew in on her broom. Show! which was just as well, for both of them, climbing down Rapunzel's hair wouldn't have worked anyway. Furious, the witch flung the prince in the window yeah. and turned to the frightened girl. I warn you about this. No cooking, no pets, and no visitors. With that, the witch pulled out some shears and cut off all of Rapunzel's lovely hair, then turned and sped away on her broom. <laughs> a spell to get out by noon. But my dad said you would be golden touch me. Oh, very well. Sit in a chair and I'll be right with you. The only chair in the room was a genuine Louis XIV, the witch's pride and joy. He touched one arm. The chair was transformed into gold and because of its sudden gaining of weight, it plunged through the floor. Why, you little... Oh, I tell you, an angry witch is the worst kind. So the sun wasted no time in beating a hasty retreat. <laughs> If I ever lay my hands on you! I like you, too. Will you be my wife and live with me in my kingdom? Yes, I will gladly go with you because actually there doesn't seem to be any future here. I mean, Rapunzel let down your hair, let up your hair. It gives me a headache, I'll tell you. Then it's settled. We'll be married right away. Just let down your hair and we'll be off. Aren't you forgetting something? No. What? Me! If I let down my hair, how am I to get down? Oh, that's right. Well, I think you'd better go now. The witch will soon return. Oh, don't worry, Rapunzel. I'll, I'll think of something. Whoops! Oh, you've come to fetch your lady love. Well, you goofed. You'll never see her again. <laughs> Wicked child, I thought I'd separated you from the world, yet you deceived me just for that. Well, now you've done it. We're both stuck here now. Aren't you forgetting? Darling, I know this sounds fantastic and utterly absurd, but I have this uncontrollable desire to have a salad made from that variety of European bellflower. A rampion? Yes, dear, a rampion. Well, here we go again. <laughs> In the village nearby, there was a miller who was very poor, but as luck would have it, he had a very beautiful daughter. Now, it so happened that one day, the miller had occasion to speak to the king. Uh, I got a daughter who can spin gold out of straw. Spin gold out of straw? Yep. 
Bring this girl to my castle tomorrow, and if she can do as you say, I shall take her for my bride. Good day. Father, what did you tell him a thing like that for? So that he'll marry you. We can live in a palace in comfort. But I can't spin gold out of straw. You know that. Yeah, I know it, and you know it. But the king doesn't know it. <laughs> and we sure won't tell him. In fact, windmills are Papa Clinker's specialty. He repairs them. <laughs> but not very well. Papa, the windmill just fell down. Is it still turning around? Yeah, but it's turning around on the ground. Who okay, cares so long as it's still turning? Brunhilda! Yeah, Mama? Go wash your hands! Brunhilda promptly dunked her brother in the wash tub, and that's how Hans Klinker got his name. That night, the painter told his wife of his plan to become a shoemaker. His wife said, Shoemaker for Matt May, they are born. Why don't you forget it and go back to something sensible like, like painting? Nine. Even ten. <laughs> Anybody can paint. I wanted you to be a prince so we could live happily ever after. Me too. But I do want to thank you for all your trouble. Farewell. And with that, the beast kissed her hand. And in a blinding flash... <laughs> Cutie turned into a beast. Well, how do you like that? I'm the one who was bewitched. I was a girl beast all the time. And so, as usually is the case, <laughs> it was a happy ending. They were married, and as far as anyone knows, are still living a beastly happy existence to this very day. Once inside, he changed back to himself and cried to the princess. Darling! Sweetie! <laughs> The princess was anything but beautiful. <laughs>